Hey everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. I am the head of the music and audio channel here on creativelive.com. If you're new to Creative Live, we are the world's best online classroom where you can learn how to make music, so writing, engineering, mixing, all that stuff. This is the place to learn it. Uh, we've got Ty from uh, Issues here to talk about the Band Happy Masterclass that he's going to be doing every day on Vans Warp Tour. If you want to get a ticket to that, go to bandhappy.com slash warp tour and you can sign up to talk to this guy uh, for an hour every day on Warp Tour. You can go to every single show if you want and talk to him for an hour every single day if you want. <laughs> So Ty, you were stuck in a little bit of traffic. I don't know what you were thinking trying to go somewhere at 4.30 uh, on Friday afternoon in Southern California. <laughs> yeah, well, we thought we left in uh, plenty of time, but there was just like the perfect storm of BS that we had to go through, so. All right, well, you learned your lesson. So aside from, uh, aside from sitting in traffic and getting ready for Warp Tour, uh, what have you been up to the past, uh, past couple weeks, month here? Um, couple things. I've uh, been finishing Tyler's record, uh, his little solo album. I've been uh, doing a lot of production for him and as well as mixing his record. Um, and then also trying to finish up, I guess, my, my record and my set for a Warped Tour. And um, just getting ready for Warped in general, just like packing, getting the set, backtracks, everything. Just everything's been super busy, but it's been awesome. So. Yeah, so you are actually playing, you're playing on one of the smaller stages of Warped Tour uh, just by yourself, right? Yep, I'm doing a Spotify set, um, or a set on the Spotify stage uh, um, every day, as well as the issue set, so that's going to be cool. Nice. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess what I, what I want to talk about, first of all, is like, um, you know, you touched on this a little bit, but maybe talk a little bit about your role in issues. You know, you're not just uh, you're not just the guy that gets up there and presses play on the bass drops. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, actually, me and AJ are kind of the main writers. Um, and as the brands progress, like um, you know, we write more collaboratively. <laughs> but you know, still like. Uh, the majority of the ideas start between me and him. Um, I write as, like, I play drums in another band, so I write as a drummer would write in a band. So, like, you know, like uh, rhythm structures, breakdowns. I do help with riffs or whatever, but AJ is really, like, the mastermind behind, like, the, the guitars and everything. But uh, um, I do do the, I do the, I do do the production uh, as well. <laughs> it, it, as well. And, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, me and AJ write, uh, pretty much the, the majority of the music together. So. And you actually have a little bit more of, I guess what you'd call a, uh, a, a traditional background of music than most people in your genre. Can you talk about what role education has played in your you know, career as a musician? Yeah, um, I, uh, yeah I, I got really into jazz um, composition and, and went to school in Seattle uh, just for just for a year but went to school in Seattle for jazz composition and honestly you know I was just doing it to get tools to like I guess be better at whatever I wanted to do not necessarily jazz and and it has totally helped like <coughs> like in metal you know obviously that stuff doesn't always like matter or apply like if you're doing like you know heavy riffs whatever like guitar riffs even like guitar riffs don't have anything to do with theory but it does come into play when we're talking about like chord progressions production on top of of whatever uh, AJ's playing uh, melodies that Tyler's doing uh, all the stuff that I learned um, you know in jazz school or whatever has really helped me like navigate uh, like the songwriting process a lot better and um, what I always tell people is you know some people are like you know screw school I don't need an education blah 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 and you know, honestly, if you want to do it like like that and just like you know feel it or whatever, I that's that's totally legitimate as well. But I just, for me, I wanted I never wanted to hear something and be like not and not be able to recreate it. So with the tools that I learned, I guess from school, if I hear something in a song that I really like, like a chord progression or like a certain you know something that I know is like has to do with their knowledge of theory, like. Um, you know, most of the time I can figure it out and I can create it. And there's no way I could have done that like on my own without some education. And, you know, it's not for everybody in the different levels or whatever. That's that that's to 
anyone's taste but for me i just wanted to be equipped with more tools to be like able to do more more things and definitely with with issues like we do a lot of courses that are, like have real chords and like you know interesting like progressions or at least we try and uh yeah that theory has really helped me like make that stuff legit and pop so yeah you know issues for a band that's so uh you know, catchy and uh, has so many hooks. You know, the the I, the more I listen, it's it's really it's kind of progressive. You know, it, it kind of it reminds me of Periphery a lot, actually, which is <laughs> kind of funny, like Periphery with like R and B vocals. You know, they 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 are a huge influence, but don't tell them. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, we won't tell Matt. Um, <laughs> so, um, speaking of production, we have a class coming up on uh, August sixth with uh, your buddy Chris Crummett. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like to work with him recording the full length? I know from talking to him, he uses a lot of outboard gear, which is kind of unusual. Doesn't do, doesn't do a lot in the box. Yeah, um, that's one thing I really appreciate about, about Chris. His style, his like, um, his, his, his like vibe or whatever is really like analog. So um, A, it, it's just you know cool to learn from him because he's incredibly knowledgeable. He knows uh, uh, and he really understands music, like all types of music. Um, and B, just the sound he gets with us is awesome because you know we have a lot of production and a lot of these elements, vocal stacks, whatever. It's really easy to get that to start sounding you know bland and like lifeless. You know if we were doing like mostly in the box stuff, but the fact of the uh, like. That he comes from like more of a rock background with like using the you know more outboard gear and things like that it, it helps us preserve some of that like live feeling like we still sound like an actual band you know the drums sound like drums yeah. and sound like clicks or whatever but um the thing with chris as well is you know he's really believed in our band since day one so like with black diamonds and continuing to the full length he's really like from right off the bat understood like what we were trying to what we were trying to accomplish and he's become like a super vital part of like our um our like our entire sound like he helps us um with certain songwriting things structural things um he's helped us with melodies lyrics like he really gets issues and he really understands like what we're trying to do and it's just been like awesome to work with him because you know the worst thing is when you're with like a producer or an engineer that like you obviously can tell that they're like not into your music right. and they don't really care but he's really passionate about making good sounding stuff and he's really like believes in our band so i loved working with chris cool so if, if you want to hear uh if you want to hear more about how chris works and uh tune in on august 6th it's going to be called Studio Pass with Chris Kremont. I don't have it on the calendar yet, but I will soon. He's also worked with uh, uh, Johnny Craig, Dance Kevin Dance, uh, Sleeping with Sirens, Alisana, lots of other big bands that you probably like. So definitely check that out. Uh, so speaking of classes, um, you know, you're a busy guy. You're in two bands. You help out with some other bands. You got a lot of other stuff going on. Why, and Warp Tour is crazy on top of that. Why take an hour out of your day? To, uh, to, to teach this class and I guess give people an idea of what kind of specifics uh, they'll get if they uh, come to the backstage class? Well, uh, I think there's a lot of reasons actually. I think that like, well, first of all, I get, I get um, tweeted a lot about random stuff. Like just, hey, can you do a tutorial on this? How did you do that? How did you do this? And I am always down to like, um, shed light on whatever you know my creative process is whatever people like whatever they hear and they want to know like how that was created or where the idea came from I'm 100% down with that because I think that adds to just like a greater musical community whatever And I, um, but I think that like this hour long class is like such a it's, it's a, such a great opportunity to connect face to face with like kids that have been asking me these questions and people that are just curious or whatever showing exactly how we do things and I just I know that when I was younger I went to things like this and cer certain times like I would just learn the smallest thing that would change my life you know I went and saw this producer from this group uh, Blue Scholars a, 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 a Seattle hip-hop group actually um, he taught um, he was teaching a class on beat making and I learned more than that, more in that have 45 minute class that I had learned like for years, just like trying to do stuff on my own internet, YouTube, whatever, just because he was so informative and he was literally just, uh, you know, just giving out information and answering every single question. And like that really inspired me as a kid. And I think that like, if, if I am 
putting out music that people are enjoying and inspiring, it's it's kind of my like it's kind of my responsibility to I don't know to to share more than what than just the final product to share more to share how I got there because if I can help a kid or you know any not even just a kid but if I can help anybody kind of like open a new way of thinking or technique or whatever that can elevate their music then that's awesome to me so so will you be focusing um, more on like on drums because you know you are a drummer for anybody who doesn't know I think that's kind of your main instrument right. Uh, yeah. We'd be focusing on drums, DJ production. Do you, or have you just kind of figure, see how it goes, and and go from well, there? I think what we decided is we're going to break down a song from like where it started to where it is. Because when I was watching um, uh, Jordan and Lee for "Bring Me the Horizon," do it. That's kind of what they did, and it seemed like it was really effective. So I think we're going to um, break down "Stingray Affliction." And it started, you know, the first riff started with a pre-profile file from AJ. AJ brought it to me. I wrote some, like, drums to it. Um, and then I presented it to the band. Uh, Sky had added his, his flavor. Uh, Josh, um, you know, obviously made the drum parts his. He took, like, my drum parts kind of as a skeleton and, like, really elevated them and, and you know, added his stuff. Uh, Tyler and Michael um, wrote all the lyrics. And then I just did that production break at the end. And I think it's like that song entails like pretty much everything we do as a band in one song. You know, certain songs are like mainly AJ, some certain songs are mainly Sky or whatever. I think Stingray Affliction is a perfect example of that something that was like that sh that clearly shows like m everything that we all do. So um, I think we're going to just break that down in just like kind of a short, concise way. Uh, show how I did certain things, where certain ideas came from. Tyler's going to talk about some of the lyrics, and then we're just going to answer whatever questions. So cool. Well, I, I'm sure everybody will love that. I, I've I've noticed that compared to other bands in your genre, you guys are definitely getting some recognition, which you deserve for being really good musicians. And that's unfortunately kind of rare in your genre. You guys really stand out, and I'm I'm happy to see that people are recognizing that. I appreciate that. Man. Thank you. Cool. Well, so we got a couple uh, questions from the chat room here. Uh, one is uh, from someone whose name I cannot pronounce. What is the hardest part about putting music together? Like, I write, but I always have a hard time coming up with music to go with the lyrics. How do you pull that together? So some people write lyrics first, then music. Other people write music, put the lyrics on top. Some people do it at the same time. Right. Talk, talk about a couple ways you can approach that. Um, well, per personally, like I've, I've definitely done everything all different ways. Um, but personally, I find it very hard. I find it a lot harder, um, just personally to like, uh, when I, when I have lyrics to put music to it. So I understand like your pain on that one, but you know, sometimes, I mean, the lyrics just come to you naturally and they, and you, you know, you need to, you need to fill it out. So what I would do or what, what, what I always try to do is I just try to like keep what, if, if I'm stuck on something then that means that my ideas are not fresh enough. So I, I try to learn something new. So it, it, it could be as simple as learning a, a chord progression on YouTube or, or like, um, you know, like learning a, a breakdown that you really like how to play or whatever. And when I learn these things, it opens doors. I, I, I find things that I really like and then I make sounds or songs and, and whatever creations based off of that new, new material. So, a lot of times um, when I learn it and I create it, it's very new to me because it's a new skill and it's uh, that much more inspiring. So then I, it's a much easier to take these lyrics that I have and apply them to this because if it's something that, if it's a chord progression that I've been messing around with on a guitar for like six or seven months and I have these lyrics, you know, this chord progression already sounds stale and everything I'm trying with these lyrics like don't work. So I don't know. I feel like anytime I'm stuck like in situations like that, I just try to just try to freshen up and try to just keep, like try something I've never I've never done before so if you keep trying the same thing and it's not working you should probably try something else yeah exactly cool um, so uh, here's here's a question from Rachel which is what is your favorite song to perform on stage my favorite song to perform on stage um, that's toughy because they're all really fun but uh Actually, currently, it's been Never Lose Your Flames because, um, you know, as like my role in the band, keyboard player, uh, DJ, what have you, it's 
been it's always been a challenge which is awesome which is good it's always been a challenge to figure out like what exactly i'm going to do live and never lose your flames just the way it's like put together i've i've been able to play like pretty much every single one of my parts live you know because on the record if i'm scratching and there's like a keyboard part at the same time i've got to backtrack one of those and i mean obviously i'm going to tr- backtrack the keyboard because i always scratch live but um I'll never lose your flames uh for some reason, all of those parts just kind of like flow into each other well enough where I can play it. So Never Lose Your Flames is like the one song that I'm like constantly from the beginning to the end. I'm constantly doing something. I feel really involved with the music. So that's probably my favorite to play. So, so here's a question that I would like to know the answer to also. Uh, Katie129 uh, wants to know, do you see the band staying on this path or do you see yourself changing it up on the next album? I know this first one just dropped, but I'm sure you guys are thinking about what's next. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I always believe in growth. Like, I honestly don't want to be the same. I don't want to put out the same album again and again and again. And, like, there's always this huge scary thing of, like, oh, the fans are going to hate it because they like our old sound or, 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 or you know, we're going to be called, like, sellouts or whatever. But, honestly, I, I get bored of of sounds even my own so like i don't want to listen to this the album we just put out again so we're going to try to always elevate always grow as a band while staying true to our natural mentality and our sound you know we're not going to put out this record and the next record is going to be a damn dubstep record or something like that or like a country record like it ain't going to be like that but we're definitely going to try to be we're definitely going to try to progress you know what i mean and if that changes if that changes the sound that changes the sound but we're it's always going to be issues and um I think that, you know, if fans just just stick around and they like, you know, our minds or whatever, they're going to enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, we're just definitely not – we're definitely not interested in putting out, like, just the same type of thing because Black Diamonds, the full length, I mean, in my opinion, are pretty different. Um, so I think as we go on, we're going to keep trying new things and, and stuff like that. But it – it will always be issues. Don't get scared. It will always be issues, and we're never going to. Yeah, well, turn. you don't. You don't want to be that band. You don't want to pull a Metallica, and you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, question uh, here. Question from uh, Sad Ghost is: What bands insti- inspire you the most musically? So I know you have a pretty broad range of influences. Do you want to kind of talk about those and and specifically like I think you guys do a really good job of combining those influences without them feeling like it's like stuck together. Like you know, some people they'll do like hip hop and metal, but it's like they just switch between the two instead of combining them. Right, you know right. what I mean? So can you talk about kind of some of your influences and how you make those go together so seamlessly? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, see, it, you, you nailed it because that's, that's like our biggest, that was, well, me personally, that's my biggest like fear. Is, and before this band, like I, I had always stayed away from it just because I was so scared of it, was combining different like worlds and stuff without it sounding like clashy or tacky or whatever. But, um, um, you know, I, I, I as far as the pop side and R&B side, I really love like kind of like the um, alternative eccentric stuff. Like when the weekend came out, I was I was obsessed, hooked on that. You know, Drake t- type of stuff, and then like under really underground like electronic music, um, like Phonat and and um, you know Pendulum. Though they're not really underground, but like it, like a bunch of like electronic stuff, um, and then you know on the uh, metal side. We, uh, me and AJ really like uh, groovy, like hardcore stuff. We really like um, like gent type of stuff. Like we really like Periphery. Super influenced by um, Gideon. Uh, um, I really like Sick Mashuga. Huge, huge band or huge influence on all of us. You know, and Sky's like a huge like death metal and black metal uh, fan. Which <laughs> I don't know how we put all this stuff together, but and then um, you know, gotta love the classics. Stevie Wonder. Uh, it's a huge influence to me. And then probably my favorite band of all time is, well, Linkin Park. But the <laughs> Hybrid Theory and Meteora Era. Only the good ones. Yeah, exactly. And Reanimation actually is probably the most influential, single most influential album on my life personally. Because I listen to that album now and I'm just like, that's where I got that. And it's like, oh, that's why I do that. Like, it's like, ugh, it's painful to listen to, but it was just so good. And when I heard it, I was like very impressionable. So. Um, reanimation is probably like top top oh and then oh, i have to say last thing tower power tower power is probably the first 
first music that taught me something. First music I listened to, and I was like, I like was like, you know, what? I'm gonna try that. I, was I like, think oh. there's so much in common between like funk and like gent and hardcore. Like it's oh, yeah. like that same kind of gro- it's the same grooves. Right. Totally. So that makes I've always been into like funk too. I grew up listening to like uh, James Brown a lot with my mom and stuff. And it's yeah. like the same kind of thing as you hear like you know like Stingray Affliction or something. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, totally, totally. I, I, I feel like, you know, just because there's genres, you know, at their extremes or whatever, and, you, you know, at, at arm's length, they sound very different. But I feel like people are still, you know, on all spectrums of music are still searching for the same things. You know, the, the elements of surprise, the impacts, the drop, you know, is not just a dubstep thing. Like, people do that all the time in metal. Drops like, are just tension and release. That's all it is. It, exactly. And, and. Um, you know, everyone's like kind of like reaching for the same rainbow. They just have their different tools. And, and I don't know, I personally just like to find those elements that I really like to hear in every, t- in every type of, um, you know, storytelling, whether it be a funk song or a metal song. I love to hear, like you said, the tension and release groove, uh, just like, you know, power, things like that. I, and that's why I like just got to keep the, the music or the music spectrum wide, you know what I'm saying? Because like, there's so many, so many bands out there, so many artists doing amazing stuff in their own way. And if you just like don't really delve into it, everything just you know, you don't, you, you're just gonna be a one trick pony. You're just I think gonna be Jimi Hendrix said there are only two kinds of music: good music and bad music, which I agree totally. with. Uh, one last question here, because we're running out of time. From Alondra has issues. Uh, when did you know that you wanted a career in music? When did I know I wanted a career in music? Um, well, I've always like kind of like, oh, it'd be cool. Um, until I went to I, I went to this arts high school in um, oh, no, Tacoma. <laughs> in Tacoma called Tacoma School of the Arts. And if, and if you, by the way, if you want to see uh, some of Ty's work from back then, it's on YouTube. If you look up <laughs> like DJ Scout, there's some there's some sets back then uh, from the high school days. They're out there. Yeah, they're very embarrassing. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, that the, I think um, going there and like taking a legit songwriting class and learning about um, you know chords, keys, structures, and me actually trying it, I was like, wow, I really love this. And then I got a job at a pizza place, and I was like, wow, I don't really like this at all. So I realized that like I like that's music is what I want to do. And you know, there's been certain times where I've just gotten discouraged and like, oh, maybe I should like focus on something else. But I was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna go for this. I'm gonna try it. There are people that do it. I'm gonna do it. And every time I like saw an opportunity, I just went full speed for it and and tried my best and and you know, worked hard. And you know, it's finally. You know, things are finally happening in certain areas, like issues. So that's awesome. But yeah, I think high school was really when, when I when I decided that that I, I couldn't do anything else. So. Right on. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, braving the traffic to to get here. Um, definitely, I'll definitely come say hi uh, at Warp Tour this summer. Um, and in the meantime, if you want to. Uh, buy a ticket to his class, to the Issues Backstage class with Band Happy. Go to bandhappy.com slash warp tour. You can buy it there, and we'll see you then. So that's a wrap. Awesome.